Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ayana um, and this video is gonna be just a little bit all over the place. So first of all, it's spooky season. So I took full advantage of it and used my black lipstick that I love, but I can't wear it all the time. It, it's, a little, it's a little dark. So, you know, I gotta only bring it out for certain occasions. So what do you guys think? Do you like it? Thanks. I'm assuming you guys just responded and said yes, so thank you so much. Um. But yeah, so spooky season makeup is alive and in effect. Um, this twist out is also live and in full effect as you can see because I'm still separating my curls. I always find one or two that are not fully separated um, later on like after I separate my hair and I don't know why. So if you can't tell I'll just you know let you on a secret. I cut my hair. Um, I originally was gonna go get a haircut like professionally and one day I was just trimming it and I got a little scissor happy and I was like, you know what? These blonde ends are not it. They're not cutting it. They're not happy. They're not thriving. Um, so we're going to get rid of them. So I cut off a good probably three inches of my hair. It might be a little bit more uh, because number one, I don't know how to measure. I kind of just went for it. And secondly, because it feels like it was a lot more. Um, I'll put some comparison pictures up for you all as well but I feel like I chopped off a good amount of my hair and you can also tell because it's pretty dark like I was a I was a blonde girly a little while ago and now we're almost back to my natural hair color like we have some tips in there but for the most part she's uh she's pretty pretty uh dark my natural hair color is like a really dark brown almost black um, compared to my blonde and my skin tone right now, it definitely looks very black. So uh, that might be what you guys are seeing, but she's pretty dark if you can't tell. Uh, so what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you think I should go back to blonde? Do you think I should try another color? I've always been thinking about, you know, doing maybe a dark red or a dark purple. Um, why not? I'm all for it right now, honestly. I'm not doing a whole lot, but... I definitely enjoy the change. I freaked out the first couple of weeks. I think it's been maybe three weeks since it's been cut. Um, and I freaked out a little bit because it is so much shorter than I'm used to. Like this is so much shorter than I'm used to. It feels so much healthier, but definitely shorter. When I twist my hair, my twists don't come nearly as long, um, like down. Um, and even this twist out right now, it doesn't come as far out as I'm used to. Usually it hangs a little bit right now it's kind of just you know out which is still cute I still like it it's just different um so yeah that's that is my hair update for you guys I cut my hair um and I'm actually very surprised that it doesn't look as crazy and uneven as I thought it was going to I think the back is probably still a little bit too long um because I was a little more cautious when I was cutting the back than the rest of my hair by the time I got to the front it was kind of just a a free for all so I might go back in and cut the rest of the back a little bit so it's not mullet-y um, but other than that I really like the shape of it right now and the um, the healthiness honestly so with that this video is for a hair update number one number two I'm gonna talk about um, five things I've learned so far in quarantine so by now, a lot of stuff has opened up outside um, from the pandemic, so not everybody's still in quarantine, I guess. But these are kind of just some things that I learned along the way about my hair, but also kind of some of it applies to just life in general. So I just wanted to share that with you along with this hair update. So if you don't mind, I have my handy dandy notebook um, to help me remember what I'm going to talk to you guys about. <laughs> so the first thing um that I wanted to mention once again that I cut my hair reasons why is because um I've had blonde hair since basically the beginning of my natural hair journey um, and I loved it it was great like I love the color I've dyed it twice um once professionally once on my own and 
it's gone great but also when you dye your hair especially when you're bleaching it um it dries it out a lot so if you're not taking care of it and you're not being very um mindful of the amount of moisture you put into it it can get a little crazy sometimes and then on the other side of that when you have two different um hair textures going on it gets a little bit hard to manage so similar concept with transitioning when you have two different hair um hair textures going on in your head you have to cater to them both and sometimes what they need have competing priorities so as you can see my hair was grown out a decent amount um with you can see the blonde tips obviously but you can see a lot of my natural hair so my tips needed a whole lot of moisture and they were always tangled and it was just so much more work but i noticed the top half of my hair was never like that it my hair is thick so it it stays tangled like i can detangle it right now and it'll tangle back up but it was a lot harder to detangle the ends of my hair as opposed to the it was a lot harder to detangle the ends as opposed to my roots um my ends needed a lot more moisture just the whole process it was always easier at the top and harder on the bottom so i kind of had the idea about trimming my hair because of that and i always do regular trims anyways but I just noticed it more and more as the top of my hair got longer. I was thinking to myself, wow, the top of my head is so much easier to manage. I wonder if my whole head was my natural hair color, how much different it would be. Because I haven't had that since literally the beginning of my natural hair journey. So that's been like five years so far. Um, so I just figured why not try it and see and grow it out. Um, and I told myself I didn't want to dye it again until I fully grew my hair out anyways. And the scissors just <laughs> accelerated that process for me. Um, so just wanted to emphasize that health over length will always be the key to success. Yeah, my hair was pretty long, but I'm so much happier with how it is now. Um, I did freak out. It's not just a, oh yeah, this is amazing. I did freak out. I was a little nervous, but I appreciate how it is now. And I'll always value health over length, um, because that is what matters the most, especially with curly hair. Um, the second thing I just want to mention is, once again, be careful when dyeing your hair. My ends were not happy. And I could tell now, especially because I know that these are healthier ends, <laughs> that how unhappy my ends were. They were very dry, very brittle, broke off very easily. Um, and I was still taking care of it. I was putting moisture into it, but they were just old. It's been over a year and a half since I dyed my hair. Um, and sometimes it just gets closer and closer they're they're just ready to go so that is something I just want to share with you guys and that is my little hair update so now now on to the five things I've learned since we've been in quarantine thing number one coconut oil is not my friend um coconut in anything honestly so one day I was just scrolling through the YouTubes and going through pages and I saw a video, I will try to find it for you guys and link it, but I saw a video that said something about coconut oil and how it affects our hair and how it's not necessarily the best thing for us, um, for our hair in general. So I don't know about you guys, but when I started my natural hair journey, everybody was using coconut oil. It was whatever leave-in, whatever cream, whatever gel, coconut oil. That was everybody's thing. So I thought to myself, obviously, okay, I'm gonna get coconut oil. And I am a product junkie to the max. So when I do any sort of switching up my hair routine, which I do almost weekly, sometimes depending on what products I'm using and if I'm doing a review, sometimes I wanna use a product for longer to get a full, a full use out of it basically, but I will always use coconut oil. So when I saw that video, I kind of just thought to myself, you know, along with me considering the health of my hair with, the, with my dyed hair and my ends and everything like that, I thought about it and I was like, you know, I don't think I've ever tried anything outside of coconut oil in my hair routine. So let me just give it, you know, a month or two and see what happens. When I tell y'all, my hair flipped itself on its head. Like it always felt kind of wiry in the middle of my twisting process or um, it felt hard almost whenever I would use anything with coconut in it. And in my head, I kind of just thought, oh, that's just how my hair is, whatever. I'm gonna, that's just what I have to accept. So I stopped using coconut oil. I switched to grapeseed oil, um, which is a lighter weight oil, especially I wanted to use that on my hair because it's low porosity and I didn't want anything that was gonna just 
sit on top and feel hard and thick and heavy. So after not using coconut oil for a while, I realized your girl has really soft hair. It's thick. It's a lot, but it's soft. And I didn't realize that until I stopped using coconut oil. So all that to say, make sure you're researching what works for your hair. Just because you see everybody else doing it, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It might, which would be awesome, but make sure you're open to trying new things. Natural hair journeys are all about experimentation. You need to make sure you take the time to figure out what works for your hair, what works for your lifestyle, what works for you in general. So be open to trying and failing if you need to. Um, hopefully it doesn't take you five years to realize that there's a product that your hair doesn't like, like me. Um, so just make sure you're open to new products, new opportunities, and in life in general. Just because you've done it all your life doesn't mean that that's the best thing for you. So it's okay to take the leap of faith. It's okay to try something new. If you find out that the new thing isn't for you, you can always go back. That's the beauty of trial and error. Um, but don't be afraid to take the, the leap of faith or switch something up because you might get a much better outcome than what you were used to. My second thing, low manipulation does not equal abandonment. So ever since quarantine started, I haven't been really leaving the house. So I'll, you know, do my twist out or braid out, throw my hair up in a puff and not touch it for two weeks. Usually before I would wash my hair probably once a week because I was outside, I was sweating, I was manipulating my hair, I was going out. I wanted my hair to look a certain way for events and things like that. So I would probably wash my hair or do something to my hair once a week to every 10 days. Now I will literally leave my hair in twist for two weeks and not touch it. That is not good either because your hair dries out. If you're laying in bed all day for weeks at a time, days at a time, that's going to dry out your hair, especially if you're not using a satin pillowcase, um, which confession time, sometimes I do not do. Sorry, don't judge me. But um, if you're leaving your hair in these styles, you need to make sure you're still moisturizing, you're oiling your scalp, you're making sure your hair is detangled well in these styles because abandonment is almost as bad as high manipulation because when you finally get around to doing your hair you have to yank through all the tangles and knots and all the dryness that you left behind because you were doing low manipulation which in reality you were just abandoning your hair so make sure you don't confuse the two that was tip number two tip number three giving yourself grace so in life in general, with this channel, with my hair, with everything, I've had a really hard time with giving myself grace and being patient with getting things done. So um, posting content, doing my hair, um, getting things done that I'm used to, um, being productive in general, I've just slowed down on a lot of those things. And at first I was really hard on myself. I was thinking, why, why can't I get this done? Why is this taking so long? I should have done this by now and all these other things, but you have to realize that this isn't a normal time for anybody. Um, this isn't routine. You can't just ignore the outside world and pretend like everything's okay. So give yourself grace during this time. Um, give yourself grace doing your hair. Sometimes your hair isn't gonna be perfect and that's okay. Sometimes it has its bad days too. You have your bad days, your hair has its bad days. That's fine. Just move through it. Give yourself grace, give your hair grace, <laughs> be patient, and work through the struggle. Tip number four. Virtual meetings are not natural girl friendly. I personally work from home right now, and I have a lot of Zoom calls and online virtual meetings and things like that. And I always dread when I have to turn my camera on. Because nine times out of 10, I'm sitting in my in a super dark room, either my room or out in the living room somewhere. I'm sitting in a dark room. My hair's up in twists. I might not even have a shirt on. And then it's, oh, can we turn on our cameras during a meeting? And I am stressed. I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, I'm gonna look crazy on this call. But if I don't turn my camera on, everybody else has theirs on, what am I gonna do? It's it's literally a mini panic attack every single time. So virtual meetings are not natural girl friendly. So those people that are having virtual calls right now for work, for school, whatever, 
please keep your natural girls in mind and realize that sometimes they're not camera ready. Not everybody wakes up camera ready. Not everybody throws on clothes. If I know I'm staying home all day, I'm not going to take down my twist out and unwrap my hair, take off my bonnet, all of that. Because that's, that's extra manipulation for my hair that I don't need. It's safe in its style. It's safe tied up. It's safe in its twists. I don't have to do anything to it. It's low maintenance for me. I don't want to have to take it down just for a call. So please, if you are hosting virtual meetings, don't be offended if your natural queens want to keep their cameras off. Sometimes it's embarrassing. And that's just what it is. All right, so tip number five. Tip number five is progression over perfection. I feel like people hear this all the time and we say this all the time, um, but quarantine has definitely emphasized this for me. As long as you're working towards something and you're taking steps toward it, it doesn't have to be perfect on your first try or your second try or your third try. It doesn't have to be perfect ever. As long as you're working toward it and you're making progress um, towards something that you want. So even if you see somebody else posting a billion videos a day or getting a bunch of followers going viral, whatever it may be, as long as you are on your own path and your own journey and it's making you happy and you're making progress toward the direction you want to go in, that's all that matters. A lot of times we define our goals by what other people want for us or what society says is like it. So going viral. Not everybody has to go viral to be successful. I definitely face this like I was talking about before. I haven't been making as much content lately or posting as much as I wanted to. And in my head, I was just thinking like, oh, well, all these other people are doing X, Y, and Z and gaining all these followers and, and their videos are doing great. Like if I just post, why can't I just post one so I can, you know, join in the fun. But um, I was doing other things. I was planning content. I was getting, you know, set up with other diff other things to make myself successful. So even if I wasn't directly doing all of those things, I was still progressing. And a lot of times we forget that baby steps are still steps. So along with my hair, I when I cut it, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Why did I cut my hair? I'm back to, you know, three years ago. Why did I do it? But it's it's not about like the perfect natural hair look or having the biggest hair or the longest curls. It's it's progressing toward what you want. So I want healthy hair. I want healthy natural hair. That's it. And this is a step toward it. I cut my hair so that the I got rid of the dead ends and the broken ends so I can manage the healthy parts of my hair and help that grow out too. So progression over perfection. Everybody's journey is different and we just need to appreciate our own while encouraging others on theirs. Um, so that was my five things I've learned during quarantine. Um, if you agree with any of them, if you liked them, um, if you disagree with any of them, comment down below, let me know. Um, if you got this far through the video, thank you for watching. I know I usually don't do videos like this where I just talk and this was very strange for me, but I just felt like I wanted to do it. And you know, I did. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys for watching and supporting me and being patient while I, you know, figure everything out. Um, I hope you guys like, and if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time. Happy spooky.